We're learning chapter 11 in Igeres Hachuva, which is on page 200, towards the bottom of the page, four lines from the bottom after the period, the middle, the last three words on the page, Umasha Kosov, it's an acronym, Vav Men Shim, which is Uma Shekotuv, and, re, and regarding what's written. So just to recap briefly, the author here tells us a fantastic, important message, that a Jew can always do tshuva, and God accepts his or her tshuva. And God doesn't accept it, Moshe, with a begrudgingly, oi, oi, you know, you know, they used to say a hundred years ago, or maybe eighty years ago, so shver to zayin ayid, oi, it's so, with a krechts, a sigh, oi, it's so hard to be ayid, a holocaust, a Stalin, uh, October 7th, peddling in the Lower East Side, getting beat up for being a, 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 wearing a yarmulke, you know? It's not schwer for God to forgive you. It's not as though God has a difficulty in forgiving us for our transgressions. And you know, begrudgingly, he this, he's doing it to pacify us, to give us, uh, for us not to become despondent. Totally wrong. The, the, Hashem, the Al-Tarebbe teaches that Hashem is not only, doesn't only forgive, but he is forgiveness. His constitution is forgiveness. And when you say that God's constitution is forgiveness, there's no difference the first time or the thousandth time. This is what we learned yesterday, Avram, a very important shear. I encourage you to listen to it if you haven't done so yet, yesterday's class. So in continuation of this, he now says, let's look inside the text. And this is a question. It's a rhetorical question on himself. Regarding the verse that is written, quote, King David, King David says this, the Chotosi and my sin, Negdi Tomit, is always facing me. King David, King David, I'm talking now simple text. I'm not talking about commentary, which explains it very differently. But simple text is, he, for example, sent a woman named Batsheva's husband to the front who got killed in war, and he took her as a wife. And other things that, at face value, is, is, is seen upon, uh, is seen as a transgression. So David says, V'chotosi, and my sin, King David, king of the Jewish people, the Mashiach will come, the Jewish Messiah will come from King David. V'chotosi negdi summit, it's always in front of me. I always remind myself of my past issues to humble me even after he did tshuva. The question that the Alter Rebbe is asking, I just finished teaching you that God truly forgives you for your sins, even after the thousandth time of doing the same thing. Why is King David saying it, it constantly is here? That's the simple meaning. The Chatosi Negdi Summit doesn't mean just as a reminder the way I paraphrased it, which is the answer to the question, the rebuttal to the question. But it is, literally means, my sin stands in front of me. In other words, God never forgave me for my sin. Well, it contradicts what we learned before. 
This is his question, his rhetorical question. And what is the answer? Here begins the answer. The purpose and intent of this verse said by King David isn't to be constantly depressed and disgraced, God forbid, that I am a sinner. The Hoksiv Basre, because in that same verse, that in that same song of King David, of David Amelech, it says, right after this verse, Tashmieni Sose Vesimcha, or in the same verse, the next part of the verse, Tashmieni, let me hear, David says to God, let me hear Sason, rejoy, rejoyfulness, Vesimcha, joy and Vesimcha and happiness, etc. And it says more so, the Ruach Nechmitiva, and a generous heart, Tismecheni, surround me with it. Surround me with a joy, with a generous heart, with a heart that is open and forgiving and all that. So, make up your mind, David, King David, which is it? Are you, are you, are you depressed from the sin that you're living with, that you did once in your life? Or are you joyful? Make up your mind. Says the Alter Rebbe, "Umishum shetzarech liyos kol yom of bichuvi lo." And since we learned earlier that one has to be all of his days has to live not just with tshuva tato, but with the higher level of tshuva. Turn, go on to page kufala, the top of the next page. Shehi besim chorabo to experience tshuva lo. Guys, Hebre, you have to be besim Rabba. Not only happy, you have to be very happy. The abundance of happiness. Kenal, as we said earlier, you can't, you won't experience the higher level of tshuva if you're truly not happy. And and it's called Simcha Rabba, an abundance of happiness. So one sec. So the Alter Rebbe says, there's no question about it. That David Melech, in his in his state of after doing tshuva, he lived with tshuva law, and that's why it says, "Surround me with um, a generous heart, a generous spirit, and let me hear joy and and happiness." In other words, he he felt God's hap- he felt his happiness in connecting to God because God forgave him. The question, it's, the question is still a question. Well, one minute, Menashe, what does that mean? But he says in the first part of the verse, the chotosi negdi summit. The sin is before my eyes. Look at the Alter Rebbe's re- answer. So he says, el negdi. The word negdi, which means opposite. Neged means opposite. Daike. Daike means focus on the word. You know, the, and the and, Kimoi, and he brings two verses to understand the word negdi in the verse in Tehillim that David quotes. One is va'ata tesyatsev meneged, right? By by Har Sinai, it says that you will all stand around the mountain meneged. And another verse is meneged saviv leoyel moyed yachanu. Around the tent of communion shall you dwell. O Peter Shrashi, and Rashi says there, what does the word Mineged mean? Meirochoik, from a distance. In other words, yes, you have to remember the sin, but from a distance. What you live with now is such a great insight. What you live with today is God's, is your happiness, your connection, your tshuva, and all that. The fact that once you ate a cheeseburger, or once you ripped someone off, or once you were nasty, or once you didn't have respect for your parents, yeah, there are times to reflect back, to give you a kick, you know where, and to say, wake up! Don't, don't think this, oh, 
I'm so great, right? I'm God's gift to humanity. I'm so great. Oh, really? Hey, what did you do when you were 17 years old on this and this day? And what, you know, no, no, no. In other words, don't be such a big shot. You're not so great. You're like everyone else, ups and downs, accomplishments and failures. So the Alter Rebbe uses these two verses to explain that when David HaMelech says, V'chotosi negdi summit, it doesn't mean negdi right in front of you, Menashe. And my sin stands in front of me, because if your sin would stand in front of you, close up, Isser, wake up. What would be if that's the case? If that's the case, you would be depressed. We're only human beings. We can't live with a simultaneous depression, despondency, and simultaneously with happiness. It don't work. Right? That's why David uses the word v'chatosi negdi. And and right, but that we discussed that already earlier in Tanya that that's talking about a benini and even about the shuva. That's tshuva tato, tshuva I don't want to go into that right now, but it's a good question. But we already addressed it earlier in in, in a few shiur before. What? I'm awake. You're awake. Very good. <laughs> good comeback, yes, sir. Good comeback. Anyway, so if if we put the sin right in front of us in our consciousness every day, sorry, chap, you couldn't serve God with happiness. And just for a moment, Menashe, now is the nine days. It's a very sad period for us, right? We're leading up, uh, Mashiach should come, and we shouldn't have a tish above. But it's very sad. So here too, you could walk around crying and broken and not get out of your bed and say, I give up. That's not the purpose of the nine days. The purpose is to realize what we lost and to be proactive and do something about it. And you could only do that if you distance yourself from, from the memory of sin and transgression, but at the same time, it's there. When we say you distance yourself, it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. We all know very well. Let's not kid ourselves. If we, if we stop and think about our lives as we were children and, 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 young, adult, and, young, and teenagers and, and young adults, I mean, we have a, a lot of baggage, all of us. So to live with that baggage now is ridiculous. I, I mean, this comes to mind, and I don't want to, you know, maybe... There was a, uh, a talk show host here in, 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 uh, for a long time. I don't think she's on. I think her name was Laura Schlesinger. She was on the radio on WABC. And, people would, and she was a psychologist, and people would ask her questions. So I remember someone asked her... Should, should I divulge to my spouse that I had an affair? Not, not to my spouse, sorry. She, she got divorced. Should I tell my new spouse that I had an affair? And she said, definitely not in the beginning. I remember she said, definitely not in the beginning. And she means not just before they got married, even in the beginning of their marriage. If you bring to a fresh situation an issue that is so painful, it's going to cause tension. Okay? Let, let, let's not kid ourselves. Now, again, there is a point where she implied, and it seems I would agree, that, you know, it might be more honest at a certain point if it comes up to share the truth. With a spouse. I didn't say with children. <laughs> Certain things kids don't need to know about, and they shouldn't know. It, it, it's not like, you know, I don't see it as like hiding. Many people say, oh, you're hiding. You know, there's an expression in Yiddish. Nicht alts was is eif der lung darf sein auf der zung. It's tongue, it's tongue. 
Not everything that's on the lung that you think about has to be on your, in your mouth, has to be said by your mouth. In English it doesn't rhyme, but in Yiddish it does. Nish alts versus af der lung darf sein af der zung. It's, it's a good line. So the Alter Rebbe, I'm just I'm thinking that the Alter Rebbe kind of says the same thing. He's not regarding marital advice and, and that issue. I'm just saying this idea that the fact that you sinned once, to live with it is impossible. You won't, you won't grow. But, 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 don't forget it. If you completely bury it, then you can be, you start believing I'm I'm God's gift of humanity. I'm so great. Huh? That's why David Amelech says the Chotosi Negdi Summit. I always remember it, and that humbles me. Let's continue. Vamechuvin says the Alter Rebbe. So what's the purpose of King David remembering it? He says the purpose is the word Mechuvin means, and the the purpose, the focus is Rak. Only for one purpose. So one shouldn't be haughty. And one should be humble. Before all of man, all of humanity. When he will remember... Beinenov, a very interesting language which is used by the tefillin. Put the tefillin between your eyes. He will remember between his eyes. Very kind of strange language to use here, but that's what he uses. Shechota neged Hashem. That he sinned against God. So neged, not in the context of very close up, but rather distant. Ader on the contrary, le'inyin asimcha. Regarding the simcha, yoyel zikoren achet. Your simcha will even be greater if you do have a distant memory of the problem, of the sin. But yes, it is. Why? Because it will humble you so that you will be, look what it says, v'chdei l'kabel b'simcha. You'll be able to then accept in a joyful way kol ha-me'urais, ha all episodes that happen, that are felt, voice, and come to you, whether it be from heaven, the deal busted, the cell phones were supposed to come, Moshe, and all of a sudden, they were canceled. You have a good relationship with them. What happened here? Oh, the boat got late, and this, and that, and that. It's from heaven. It's from heaven that the deal wasn't supposed to happen now, and it's for your betterment. And to accept that with joy and happiness, you, you, have, you can only do that if you're humble. And, and remembering your, your past from a distance humbles you. You're thankful what, for what you have. Bein ha'yideh briyas. Not only to it, to receive the message, the episode, the experience that God sends you, but that people, Avram, that people confront you with and upset you. And he says, Bedibur, whether it be with their speech, their ugly speech to you, their nasty speech, their derogatory comments, or Bemaisa. Or they actually do things. They rip you off. They tell people, and they and 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 they fool you and they deceive you. Not only in speech, but they actually do things like we see now in the political shenanigans between the Democrats and the Republicans. And I'm sure you guys in Eretz Yisrael have your share of it. Now look at this parentheses that the Alter Rebbe himself wrote, which in a way it's not necessary to be here, but he inserts it here. So if he inserts it, there's a reason. Look what he says. Menashe. Vesu, this hum humility that the remembering the, the, the sin of the past, Eitzet Toiva, 
it's good advice. Not only is it, you know, if you want to do it, but now the Rebbe is giving us advice, good advice, to be saved from anger, the whole minik peda, the chuli, and all other types of particularness where you become stern and upset. Free advice, costs no money. You need no therapist. Right here, Tanya, get us a chuva 11. You want to get rid of that anger? You want, to, you want to minimize the upset, the anger, the frustration, and everything else? Just remember who you are. Remember your, your lifestyle. Remember that it's all right. The anger will dissipate. It will tone itself down. And the Alter Rebbe has support from the sages. Those that are humiliated. And they do not humiliate. They allow themselves to be humiliated. But they don't humiliate. Or. They listen to their disgrace. The Einam Meshivim, and they don't respond. I'm sure you've been in a situation where someone berates you, starts talking and screaming and, 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 and cursing you. It's like, hey, I just came into the room. Right? And you don't say a word. You don't say a word. And unfortunately, sometimes this is done in public, in shul in school and you with you have the kayak you take a deep breath and you don't respond because if you if you wanted to you could level them with your mouth and sometimes with a fist which is the wrong thing to do of course but even with your mouth you can easily defend yourself and of and then go on the offensive and wipe the person out this low life who has the audacity to the to speak in such a way to you, and you don't. You accept the humil the embarrassment. Number three, you serve God with love, and you accept joyfully the pain, the suffering, the suffering. And this is, of course, we learned earlier in Tanya from the Gemara, this is like a level of a, an experience that Tzaddik has regularly. To serve God with love and accept suffering? Wow. So he says, Vahuli. So when, when a person wants to experience, now love in vain, he's been humiliated, but yet doesn't humiliate. He hears his disgrace put upon by someone else and he doesn't respond. And finally, he serves God with love even though he's suffering. Humility and realizing that maybe it's something that I did 60 years ago, 50 years ago, 40 years ago. I wasn't such a good boy. Both between God and myself and God and myself and other people. That thought from the distance, not up close, meaning if you dwell on it and you make it a regular habit, forget it. You'll never have simcha and you'll you'll be struggling and you'll and you'll be morbid, depressed, despondent, angry, that angry old man. Guess what, guys? Sometimes it's an angry young man. <laughs> okay? Why? Because that person is so full of themselves that nothing is good enough. So the Alter Rebbe says, the Eitz Toiva, good advice to tone down the anger is, what, is the suggestion that he gives here, which is, the David HaMelech says, and the Balatanya explains it, V'chatosi negdi samid. Always remember that, yeah, 
You once sinned. You once goofed up, and more than once. Let's just finish. But whoever um, over, over pa- passes over his his midos, his emotions, whoever lets them go and doesn't get carried away by the emotions, Hashem passes over all of his transgressions. His sins. When Hashem sees that you're able and willing to accept and not become despondent and not lose your courage and your faith and everything else, Hashem says, I will give that person a gift and I will pardon and forgive him or her for that transgression. Any comments? Have a great day, everyone. We'll yeah, see you tomorrow. I just to say this last second. Thank you. Thank you very much, both thematically and, and even in the wording of Krishna Alamita. Many of the same common themes of forgiveness and accepting suffering or the, 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 the Arvos Mita's best in. Um, so it was very, very... Uh, Right, but 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 but, but th- what the Al Tareb is doing is he's giving you a method and an eight to tell you how to do it. But you, yeah. you're 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 right. We say it, but how do we accomplish it? So he explains it here. See everyone tomorrow. We'll begin the last chapter, chapter twelve. Take care, Yoy. All the best. Bye bye.